and welcome back to my channel. My name's Leonie, aka Stitching Noni. It is Monday the 23rd of September 2019 and I'm here for floss tube number 32. 32. Yep, I'm back for another one. So my last update was the 19th of August and I meant to come back a couple of weeks ago but yeah, time just got away from me and I was participating in the um, Ultimate Cross Stitch group the team event so basically I was focusing all my energies and time into stitch 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 but I got knocked out of that so more on that in a minute um, but other than that I have a lot to show so I have all of August and I'll show you what I got up to toward the end of August and then a um, bit of an update of what I've been doing for September so far so what have we got this yes, so stitching update is from the 19th of August through to last night or actually a little bit of today but basically through to yesterday which was the 22nd of September I've had a couple of finishes in that period of time I didn't make any new starts I don't think I don't think so I'm pretty sure I didn't I'm about to do a new start in the next day or two um, but yeah lots of whips so do we have so first up the last time I spoke to you I was working on what was I working on oh castles in the air and I had picked that up and was working on that for the semi-sane stitches whip event at the time which was the crazy whips and dominoes event and castles in the air was my number six so I had to get 600 stitches on that one I managed to get through 600 stitches on one, 700 stitches, the 800 stitches, and I bombed when I got to the 900 stitches from memory. I didn't quite make that event, but that's okay. It's not life-threatening, is it, if we don't do these things? It's just a personal challenge to try and get them done. And, yeah, when I think look back over August, I could have done the 1,001 if I hadn't played around and done other things in between if I'd focused 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 I would have got it but I didn't and the consequences are I didn't finish the challenge but that's okay so we will bring out castles in the air which hopefully is the first one on top I worked on this for the 19th through to the 24th of August and castles in the air is a long dog samplers design which I'm sure most people by now would have seen at various places, but this is it. I'll put it, a picture in of where it was at when I showed it to you on the last video. And this is where it's at now. This is in... I'll get myself organised in a minute. I sort of move things around and it's not quite the way it should be, but that's okay. Um, so... What have we got to tell you about this one? This is on 32 Count Belfast at last by Colour Cascade. I'm doing it in white DMC and I've pretty much finished <laughs> one page. So you would have seen where I was at, but pretty much I have done here. So I've completed all that. I went down and finished a little bit more on that, but most mainly I worked in that area there and this will come back out again in this week because in the daily 30 group we've got a couple of challenges for the Cape Cape May week where we need to work on something with a butterfly this does have butterflies in it and there's one there and also it has um, the other prompt was to do with spirals and there are sort of staircases and things in here which I'm going to say could be spiral staircases just so that I can use that. But that will come back again again. So yeah, overall I'm quite pleased with that because pretty much that is the page break there. So one page basically finished. I think this is a little bit more small motive and a bit of backstitch on that one page. But basically that is finished and I managed to do 654 stitches all up on that particular whip for the challenge and I was able to also put it against a couple of other challenges for 
the Daily 30 Betty Boop and the McDonald's challenge. I also used it against one of my Magical Stitches challenges. And what else did I use it for? I don't, oh, and Stitchy Quest. So, quite an achievement on that one. Um, what else do I need to tell you about that one? That's probably it. So, yeah, so that was it. So, that went through from the 19th to the 24th of August, and then I also pulled out, and this is why I didn't probably complete things, because I was using my little other whips for different things, so I had to pull out something to do for a daily 30 pop-up challenge, which was to make burgers, make Big Macs, and basically from memory we had to do 80 stitches for a burger I think from memory so I thought I had better bring something out to do something quickly so I actually pulled out Peacock Lady which is the Joan Elliott one and I just did a bit more work on the border so this is where she's at now and I pretty much just worked in oops, pulled the little loose thread away so I worked on, if I, and I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I just worked on top border. And I did some filling with some more petite treasure braid. If I can see what I did. Did I do that? Mm, I think I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was just the, it was just these in here. But I did manage to put in another 240 stitches for that particular event. And I also used it uh, for a Stitchy Quest event. I needed to do it for um, Stitch Quest number 12. We need to work on some, something with an elf or a human in it. So obviously this is a human. And I used it. Oh, that's right. I had to pull it out for Magical Stitches for my 11th whip when we were doing the Death Eater challenge because this was the number 11 on my whip challenge. That fabric is, and I probably would have already put it down the bottom, but it is a jodery fabric, and it's 28 count Opal Brittany after the rain. So yeah, so close to almost being finished that one. Almost. I've got an awful lot of work on that tail to do, but you know. Close, but no cigar. What else did I have out? Okay, so that... So I worked on that one on the 20th of August and the 25th of August. So that fitted in around when I was working on Castles in the Air. And then I bought out for whip number eight, sorry, whip number seven for semi-stain. Teeth back in, breathe, start again. So whip number seven for semi-stain stitches, crazy eight domino events was Have Ye Any Wool? So I used the target of, what was my link? My link was that I went from Castles in the Air to Have You in Have You Anymore. And I can't remember what my link was now. Oh, that's all right. We've moved on. We've well and truly moved on from that event. I can't remember. It'll come back to me. It wasn't designer. Animals maybe? I might have done it with animals because of course have ye any wool, which is this one, has a sheep in it. It might have been animals, I can't remember. But that's this one and I'm using all the call for threads for that one. Again, I'll put in a picture of where it was at before I started. Now I've worked on this a couple of times since I did the how many stitches 734 stitches so where i was at when i first started and where i'm at now is quite a bit oh there's threads everywhere hang on whoops that goes over that way okay so when i started it i had i was supposed i think i was about here by the looks of my little picture so i've done her obviously finished her skirt i've put her shirt in I've done his shirt I've started one sheepy and I'm working on the basket of wool at the moment so absolutely loving this so this one's currently out I've got to do this one tonight 
because I'm using it for Daily 30 Scarecrow Week. Uh, I've got to do some stitches on it for that and finish that task out. I think I've got about 20 stitches or something to finish that task out and then that'll be done and then it'll probably go away. But this essentially is a cell that I've been working on for the um, Sheep Loving Stitches Facebook group. It's on 36 count oaken from Picture This Plus and it's, as I said, all in the core four threads and I'm just doing it one over two. Absolutely love this. I actually bought this out for uh, the Magical Stitches this week as well for the homework because you had to work on something and say what has stitching taught you. So I used the link on this one because I needed it for my daily 30 prompt and I said that um, stitching has taught me how much I love to stitch on 36 count with one thread. That's true because I love it. It's my new sort of thing. Uh, so I used that for, so I actually used that for quite a number of prompts because I used it for the pumpkin spice week, I used for daily 30, I used it for um, in magical stitches for year 5 week 8 task, I used it for Professor Umbridge because we had to do something with no pink, so I used it for that. I used it for, as I mentioned, for McDonald's week and I'm using it for the scarecrow week. So yeah, so it's had a, a good outing. And I am really enjoying that one, so it will probably come out again and stay out. The next one I bought out on the so I, I just did that I did that on two days, so I managed to get 734 stitches in two days on that one for whip number seven. So whip number eight in August for the semi sane stitches challenge was the pink sparrow sampler by Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread, and that was the link for those two because it's the same designer. Now I haven't had my pink sparrow sampler out all year, so basically it hadn't seen the love since last year. I joined. There was a sale last year, which is when I first, I think it was last year, was it last year? Yes, May 2018 I started this. And I remembered that I did this because I took this one to Singapore with us when we went to Singapore. And stitched on it in Singapore a little bit. But this is the pink sparrow sampler. I had, how much had I done when I started? Oh yeah, that's right. So I will put in a before pick and I've got this great big piece of fabric because it only takes up half the fabric but I didn't want to cut it down. So this is on 36 count picture this plus doubloon and you would have seen the before pick and this is what it looks like now. So I have achieved a border pretty much, yep the border met up but in the corner and I was working through did I put any other colour? Yes, I did. I just managed to do a little bit more, which you can't really see, but I did do a little bit more on that row there. But basically, I've worked on border. I've got all of the border done. Now, I used this for... So I've got 806 stitches in that for the semi sand stitches whip. I also used it for my daily 30 camping... So I used it for two tasks on that. So I, I was had to stitch chocolate for s'mores. So I used this brown thread. And I used it for breakfast because there's fruit. Come on, Lou. There's fruit um, in, in the design. I said you could have fruit for breakfast. I used it for a August challenge for favourite designer slash chart. I used it for my magical stitches whip number two when we did the decision wheel one and I worked on that for three days so worked, or four days so it was the 27th of August to the 30th of August and have I had it out since no so that's it so I managed 806 stitches on that which I'm quite pleased about so that's looking good no doubt I'll bring that one back out again at some other point in time but that's looking quite good now and of course, I've still got the other half of the fabric at some point to 
do something else on. Are you coming in, Mimi? No, changed your mind. Knocked on the door and went away. So that brought us up to almost the end of the month, and I still had two more crazy whips to do. So at this stage, I knew I wasn't going to make, obviously, 1900 stitches in two days. So I just decided, what do I want to work on? And really, it was the, the 31st of August was the, the last day, because that one I finished that on the evening of the 30th. So I thought, well, I will pick just something I want to work on and just forget about trying to do the whole whip nine thing. So I pulled out Forever and Ever. So Forever and Ever is the cottage garden sampling. It's number one from the Songbird, what is it? The Songbird's Garden series. So this is the, the first one. And I had to do, what did I use this for? I've got everything in here but the bit of fabric. So this one, I did say it was number nine, and I think from memory I, I linked it by saying that it was the 36 count one over one, so it linked with fabrics. And I did end up doing 334 stitches out of the 900, so obviously I wasn't going to make it. So I did thought, well in that case, what else can I use it for? So I used it for Daily 30 the camping one I used it for marshmallows but I got pinged on it because I didn't explain myself properly in Australia we have pink and white marshmallows not just white marshmallows so I stitched pink thinking that other people know what the marshmallows come in pink but no I got pinged so I didn't get my tokens for that oh hello Oz it was you knocking was it not Mumu um and Yes, I know you're there. What are you doing? What? Don't tell tales. You're coming up. What? Okay, bye. See ya. So I used it um, for the colour green in the balloon hot air balloon challenge. I used it for Stitchy Quest and said it was my most daunting project because I wanted to work on it so I thought that I'd do the right thing to try and how to link that to that one. I have also been using it for the September challenges. So what you're going to see now is everything that I've done since I picked it up over the August and September thing. Uh, what else did I... Oh yes, I used it for Magical Stitches Week 9 for the second whip in that grouping of whips. And I used it for Magical Stitches year six extra credit for the collection task because this is one in a series and so if I haven't already put in a before pick there'll be a before pick and then there's this so this is where it's at now so what I did is I worked on this one here mainly for that in August and got the pretty little flower done. So I've still got to come back and finish him, but I did the, the, the tulip, I suppose it is. And then for September, I worked on the house. So I have a house and I've started doing some of the leaf, but basically we've got a house. And this is where it's at now. So this is on 36 count Edinburgh Feldspar, picture this plus, and it's all one over one. So looking absolutely beautiful, even if I do say so myself. I do love this. It's just gorgeous. So this I will bring this one back out again at some point over the coming weeks and keep working on that one. Let's put that one away. Um, so all up. I have managed to do something like, what did I say? Um, oh, that's right. So I was using it for, I might as well talk about that now. So in Ultimate Cross Stitch Group for September, they have had a team challenge. So we, those of us that wanted to join, were put into teams. And then 
there was uh, either minimum number of stitches for the group to stitch or minimum number of stitches for the individual to stitch. So it started off quite simple, you know, you just went up and up and up and up. And then it got to, I got knocked out after round five because I was actually the lowest stitcher for my team at the time and I missed out by 60 stitches. And I was like, <laughs> but having said that, I would have been knocked out in the next round anyway because there was just no way. That was a struggle to do number five. Round five was a real struggle <laughs> for two and a half, well, two weeks, two and a half weeks, whenever I think I got knocked out around the 15th or something. So for those two weeks, I was going to bed at like midnight most nights to get my minimum number of stitches done or to do as many stitches as I could each day. And it was just got too hard. It's not so bad on the weekends because I obviously can have a bit more, a couple of hours in the afternoon as well as the evening. But when it's coming home from work and you get two hours of stitching to get five or 600 stitches in, this is almost impossible. So yeah, I was pretty knackered by the end of that. So I would have not survived past I wouldn't have got through round six. I probably would have been knocked down the first part of round six anyway. But, but that was it. But I used that for uh, one of the challenges. That, I think it was the first one. I used the third to the ninth. And I managed to get in all up uh, 900 stitches on, or 914 stitches on that piece over the last couple of weeks. So pretty impressive with that. Pretty impressive. So for August, given that that was the last sort of August slash September. So over August, I managed to do 7,079 stitches for the whole month. And my best week was the 25th to the 31st of August, which I did 2,200 stitches. Don't ask me why it was the best week, but it was. And my best day was on the 17th of August when I worked on Halloween Quaker and I got 620 stitches into my Halloween Quaker. More on that coming soon. So I will should put in the graph like I have been doing, which will show you my little bits of stitching. And somewhere that's probably appeared while I've been telling you about my numbers, but it'll appear wherever it appears. So that brings us into September. Okay, so guess what? and a storage at least I think that's what happened anyway all of a sudden I looked and went it's not recording but I think we're back to back to normal now so I had started to talk about September and I'll somehow slice this in because I was rambling on and yeah so what I was rambling on about was the ultimate cross stitch group team challenge for September and I was mentioning that I had been in the team with the Pretty much the same team we had a few people come and go um, and Leah was our team leader and I was in team pineapples daisies back stitches ghosts and daffodils so every time we changed our it was three day slots and each time we changed we had a new team name and so round five was the daffodils and I as I mentioned got knocked out because I didn't quite make the stitch well I got the I got my minimum number of stitches in so I was fine on that but I was actually the lowest um, count for that particular three days and I missed out by about 60 stitches so yeah I should have stayed up at midnight the night before but I didn't but that's okay because as I mentioned I was doing midnight stints most nights and I think my husband was glad when I stopped doing it he just kept looking at me saying, telling me I was crazy yeah I was obviously crazy for two weeks, but it was fun and I enjoyed it and I would do it again if they do it again because it was it was good fun. And I know that it depended on what whip that I worked on as to really what my uh, stitch count was. So if I worked on just a Quaker one or something that was the one colour and I was just bolting it out, it was fine. But when I went swapped into a different whip, as you'll see, it, the stitch numbers have dropped dramatically so what did I work on so far in September so so far in September I have worked on a couple of mill hills uh, where are we? There we go so my first on the first of September I had to do a magical stitches pop-up challenge and that was because uh, the first of September would sort of fell 
it was a bit in between y sort of thing, you know, that August finished and September wasn't quite the month because we start our challenges on a Monday and they go through to Sunday. So it sort of worked that it was um, one of those mini events that you sometimes do. So I had to do stitch on my newest whip. So I went and had a look at what my newest whip was and my newest whip was actually a Mill Hill kit which was my little cat in the box that I started stitching a while ago. Back on 18th of July I started that one. And I also was doing the um, Daily 30 Camping Challenge and I thought, well, Graham Crackers was the prompt I had and I'm thinking, Graham Crackers, well, crackers are generally like a creamy colour. So I thought, well, I can work with this one. So I used this one and you would have, you'll see a picture somewhere in here or in front of me or whatever to show you where I, I got to or where I was at. But essentially, I have done, just looking at my picture myself, so I was actually, I'd just done that and a little bit in here, so I've done everything else. And this is where Cat in the Box is at the moment. So, as with all lovely Mill Hill kits, most of them, anyway, stitch up pretty quick. So I managed to get in 254 stitches on that for the day. So it's pretty good. It's happy with that most happy indeed with that so at some point i'll bring that one out again and have another little go it might end up becoming one of my daily 30 ones to get it finished then on the 2nd of september i actually had a finish so this little darling this little violet owl she had been my cat's going off I have no idea what Oscar's talking about, but he's telling tales. So uh, Violet had, had been my daily 30 little one for the different prompts. And I was stitching on her for 30 minutes a day. So uh, you'll see where she was at last time I showed her. And she is now completely finished. And she does look adorable. Oh, she's got to be as FFO'd now. But she's done. Very impressed with doing her. She's so cute. So I'm gonna have to buy the rest of them now because now I've done her. I want the rest. But she's so cute. Complete with her little star. Very gorgeous. So I finished her on the second um, of September. Considering I started her on the sixteenth of May last year, she's now done. So I was very happy with that. So then I thought, well, I've got to find myself a new daily thirty. What am I going to stitch on for 30 minutes a day? So I went back to the Mill Hill pile because, you know, we do have some of these. And I decided that it was time for Miranda to come back out. So I've, I've got Miranda on the go and I've got Muriel on the go and I've got the other one, Miranda Muriel, and I can't think what the third one is. I can't remember. But I have her, I haven't started her. But um, I thought I'll get this one finished. Oh, Mimi, because guess what's on the back. Um, so I thought I'll get this one finished. I'll then go back to Muriel, get her finished, and then I'll start Mimi at some point. So, again, I'll show you where I was at when I started doing 30 day challenge on this. Now, I did use this not only just for doing 30 minutes a day, I did use it for a bulk number of stitches I had to do uh, what did I use it for I used it for daily 30 camping so I used it for an insect a Halloween and a triangles um, prompt so obviously it's a Halloween there's a spider and those little things at the bottom are triangles so I used it for three prompts I then also used it for, so I got about 300 stitches in just for doing that. So this is before I was using it for my daily 30. Um, I then also used it for a uh, Magical Stitches extra credit, for two extra credits. So one is I had to use potions. She's clearly doing potions. And I had to use it for spiders for the memory of Aragog. And so obviously a spider. So... I managed to do a number of stitches on that for that. So I had 469 for the spiders prompt, 524 for the potions 
one because I had to have uh, 500 stitches for each prompt and the other uh, daily camping, the camping ones were 100 stitches each or thereabouts so I got managed to get about 300 stitches so I've done quite a lot of stitches on this now and she is now back to purely being 30 minutes a day so like today I just did that little bit of the olive green so I'm just working on you know, I average around about 30 or 40 stitches a day on her just depending I'm doing her at lunchtime most of the time at work so depending on how many people come and talk to me in that half hour is that what are you doing and some people just come and look and then walk away but um yeah managing so I will get her finished soon so I'd be really pleased with that one I then, as I showed you already, had Forever and Ever out on the 3rd. So Forever and Ever was my first one that I used for the team event. So I had used it for the, the first couple of days and I managed to get 580 stitches in for those um, first couple of days of that event. I then moved on to Quaker Halloween. So on the 5th of September we changed out into a new team. Uh, or not a new team but a new um, yeah it was a new team essentially because I gave us a new name and we had a new ch lot of prompts to do and I did I should have written down how many stitches we had to do each time but I forgot to do that so this is Quaker Halloween and it's from Jardin Privé I have been slowly working on this one over a period of time and she was in the last one that I showed you and I had almost finished it. Well, I'm pleased to say that I have now finished it. Oops. All done. No, I'll get that right in a minute. So all done. I remember mentioning quite some time ago that I had this is all done one over one except for the ghost and I did the ghost two over and I was going to pull it out and then I thought nope I'm going to leave it because it actually doesn't look too bad with the ghost being slightly more noticeable than the other white it's a close up you can see all the other white but it just makes he just sort of stands out just that little bit more. It's hard to show him, but he does. So I did, the purple is Purple Silk from Silks For You. This white is obviously white DMC. And the fabric is Jello Shots from Hand Dyed by Stephanie. And it was, from memory, a 32 count Belfast. Hello Mitzi, you're coming to visit now, are you? Hello, sweetheart. Don't step on mum's stuff. Good girl. So, yeah, off with it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Absolutely love that. Very pleased with finishing that one. Don't ask me what I'm going to do with it now it's finished, but at some point it will get fully finished into something. So, that was that one. And I don't think I wrote down... Oh, 475 stitches is all I needed in the end to finish it. The whole family's coming in now. Hi, Fee! Uh, so I finished that on the 6th of September, which meant I could swap into another whip for that team challenge. So I then pulled out Coffee Saves Lives. And I worked on that for the rest of that one and then for the next one. And Coffee Saves Lives I haven't worked on all year either until now. Good girl, Moo. Leave it, sweetheart. Leave it. Yes, and you too. Good boy. So this is Heartstring Sampler is Coffee Saves Slimes. Uh, also, so it's also this one's being done in all the core four threads. And I used, I pulled this one out because I needed it for, besides doing it for the challenge, I needed it to do a um, magical stitches challenge and I used it for the task where we had to stitch on something basically that we had FOMO for. So I started or got this when the coffee sampler came out and I saw some people had stitched this one and I thought oh, I want to do that before I do the coffee sampler. 
all great intentions and I still haven't finished this one yet but never mind so you would have seen it before pick or you will be seeing a before pick and now you'll be seeing the real deal so this is where this one's at now so because I needed to do quick stitches I pretty much just did line stitches so I went across did all the lines I did did I do border as well I can't remember now where's my picture uh, I can't remember I might have done a little bit of border leave it please love leave it no leave it good girl uh, and Oscar's going off again but then I sort of started doing lettering as well Mitzi no leave so this is on 32 no 28 count opal Lugana gold digger from color cascade it's actually the opal sorry the opal Lugana from color cascade and threads as charted I managed to do 504 stitches on that for the challenges that I needed to do I used it for as I mentioned magical stitches for FOMO I used it for the daily 30 the monthly one where I had to stitch on a mat a piece with a man it's got a man and I used it for the pumpkin spice prompt the coffee and stitch on something that you can flavor coffee pumpkin spice apparently is a coffee flavor I've never tried it probably won't try it I'm sure it's very nice but I'm not really sure all about flavored coffee uh, so that's that one I'm getting a real mess on the floor okay we then went on to the 8th of September and this was again still going through to my other wonderful challenges that I was doing and I moved on to I thought another Quaker would help me with my multiple stitches why am I cannot open that don't want to open here we go so I moved on to oh, damn Janet moved on to I thought Quaker so I thought I should get some really good stitches in with this one because the Quakers seem to or the the sort of the sampley type things generally stitch up quite quickly and I thought well let's see how we go I was so impressed with my work on this this is awesome this is coming back out this week because I'm using it for some more prompts with the daily 30 group and magical stitches but I am so so impressed I'll put in a before pick and then prepare to be amazed because this is where she's at now. Oops. So I have essentially done. So it's a little bit of that motif at the bottom. All of this and I worked on it for a number of prompts so we worked on it for the team challenge for ultra cross stitch I got 1765 stitches in this piece for the over the two challenges that I used it for I worked on um, for magical stitches I had to use it for uh, year six one and week one and week two I didn't quite make I had to do 300 stitches and because I was late starting on that one I didn't do that I got 150 but I used it for week two for light and dark and I said that um, this project I used the for light for this project because it reminds me of when we went to Paris my husband and I I've been to Paris twice in my life and the last trip that hubby and I did we spent I think three days in Paris we didn't go up to the up on top of the Eiffel Tower. I've been on top of the Eiffel Tower. We didn't do it that time, but we uh, went to Versailles and spent some time at Versailles, and we want to go back to see Versailles again. So I used it for, as for the light. I then said that um, it's also I used it for the dark side. So I got had to do 600 stitches for light, but 400 stitches for the dark side. Now the dark side. The reason I said it was for the dark side is my colorway is not the original colorway. My colorway is based on the movie 
uh, musical Les Miserables and the French Revolution that went on at the time. So Red and the Black, I've got Red and the Black in here, which is the song from the musical. And I've introduced Blue and White so that you have Red, Blue and White for the French flag. So that's my colourway. Hubby and I picked those colourways when I was looking to what colour I wanted to do it with. So that was that. I also used it for the hot air balloon challenge for day 30 because I had to do something in French. I had to do something um, with colours. So I had to pick black and I picked red. I missed doing the rest. I think I did, I did green because that was forever and ever but I didn't do purple and orange. I didn't quite get to that one. I had used it for the time prompt because it's a date in history, because this is, the date on the chart is the date the Eiffel Tower was finished. And I said I could also used it for the balloon shape because those little motifs look like upside down balloons. And if I turn them up that way, they're balloons. If you can explain it, you get it. I used it for the daily 30 monthly because there's a tower in it. I also used it, oh, that's right, the other prompt for the hot air balloon challenge is the rooster. And the rooster is the French motto. Um, I used it for the daily 30 pop-up challenge for the full moon. I used it for, oh yes, that's right, I used it for the pumpkin spice. I, I got some real good prompts out of this. So the pumpkin spice one, I used it, and my thinking was it was the dessert slash coffee prompt. So I said that after a day of being at the Eiffel Tower and seeing the sights of Paris, we would go and have a nice piece of French patisserie with a coffee. A cafe a latte, actually. So French patisserie, dessert, and coffee. So I tied it in that way. I also used it for Stitchy Quest for the Dwarf Challenge because I was stitching in black. But I didn't really get a lot of the uh, Stitch Quest challenge done at that particular point in time because I focused on this and the rest of the dwarf colours aren't actually in this. So. But this, I just got so into doing this that it just went, mm, keep going. This is stitched on just very plain 28 count linen and the threads are, the blue is Week Style Works Liberty, the red is Week, sorry, the red is Week Style Work Liberty, the blue is Week Style Work Sky, and it's just white and black DMC. So, done. The last whip I have to show you is another one which has languished for the year and was part of my Stitch 9 Whipopolips challenges, and it's the Little House Needleworks Pumpkins for Sale. So, of course, you've heard me mentioned Pumpkin Spice Week for Daily 30, so that came out for that it also came out for the scarecrow week and it I used it for the daily 30 yearly challenge for fall for the pumpkin patch I've used this for the um, team challenge so for the ultimate cross stitch group team challenge I'll put in a before pink I managed to get 1321 stitches on this but it wasn't enough to keep me in I bombed. So, as I said, I bombed by 60 stitches. But I am so impressed with this because, as you would have seen, I have done quite a lot and I am almost finished. Actually, that's the best way of showing this because it's quite a long piece. So, hopefully, you can see that. So, I'm literally one pumpkin away and a bit from finishing. I've just got to finish. Oops, where's the pumpkin gone? So, let's sort of fill in that, do the leaf up there, finish that pumpkin and finish the border and put in the leaf and flower and it's done. So that one's staying out now for the rest of the month because I will get that one finished and do what I need to do on this one. So this one is on 28 count Joblin in Silver Springs by Colour Cascade Fabric. I think from memory this was either, must have been one of her studio sessions pieces I think or I just bought it when she had it up, 
up on the website maybe because normally I don't buy a lot of Jobun but yeah quite impressed with that so now I'm just using it I've got to this is why it will be staying out is because I've got to do for the ultimate cross stitch group a thousand stitches before the end of the month on this piece to finish it and I've got like 200 stitches left to do to do that um, finish that challenge off so that will be done and dusted so yeah I'm quite impressed with that and that is done as charted in all of the uh, classic colour works and DMC and I think that was it that's all I had to say on that one so that is all my whips there's quite a lot but there's been a lot going on and it has been a month so yeah so don't expect maybe the next one to be quite so many but we'll see what happens so what am I up to going ahead oh have you heard there's a new challenge group out called enchanted stitching which is pretty much all about Disney currently it is sleeping beauty now I have joined it because you know FOMO I haven't probably been doing quite as many of the prompts on it as I should have done so far but I'm sort of trying to fit things in where I can hopefully next month I'll get a bit more into that one but with the ultimate cross stitch group one it's sort of I had to work on prompts where I could to meet with whatever I could and didn't get everything done 24 hours of cross stitch I have been doing my acrostic and I've got where's my acrostic two more to do on my acrostic so I'll get them done I'm sort of just it's a D and an A so they should get them pretty much done I've done my 12 um, holidays that I had to do so I'm not sure yet I might fit in another couple more before the end of the month um, what else have we got so we have oh solar system I'm still with semi saying it's just a solar system I'm still um, halfway through Neptune and of course stitchy quest I'm still traveling I've got to um, Rivendell and I'm now on my way to Lothlorien so I'm doing pretty well with that one I have got some haul would you like to see some haul let's just get that out to there uh, what to do I'll try it down here Ooh. okay so I had a lay-by uh, with Tammy at Colour Cascade Fabrics and over the last few weeks it's bits and pieces have been coming in and because I do 28 count opal on most of my stuff she had some delays in getting that actual bolt of fabric or bolts of fabric so my fabric of the month has been a bit delayed but it, she's getting there now so I have got a number of different things also got another studio sessions piece that she had up for sale a while ago so this one is 28 count opal lagana in clouds but it's one of the long cuts which is like the you know the off cuts that the, she gets so it's going to be quite interesting what I decide to do with this one given it's so nice and long but I'm sure I will find something for that it's always something you can use it for so I had a this is my lay by so this is a 28 count opal old map gold digger old map style so essentially it's just a lighter version and there's more white on it but of course it's blowing out unfortunately because of nighttime light but it's really pretty so I've got a quite a large piece of that so this is my lay by one so that one is nothing. Um, and this was another lay by I love this oh my god I don't know how this is going to come up on the picture this is awesome you can see the sparkle yeah do not ask me what I'm going to use this for but this is actually the gold opal lagana and it's still a 28 count but isn't it awesome so this is called back to black no back in black and so obviously it would, it's black but of course it's giving this awesome iridescent green and I just I'm not sure what I'm going to put on this yet but it's awesome it's it looks green there but it's 
it is black but it's it's showing it because of the sparkle it's got so much sparkle in it it is awesome who knows what i'll use it for oh but it's a huge big piece so this is my february um fabric of the month and this is a 28 count opal and this is called hollow pond so it's sort of pinky purple greens pinkies greens don't know what i'll do with that one yet but a mirror potentially maybe don't know really pretty very very pretty and then the march fabric of the month was raspberry swirl this is most likely be a mirror of some description as well so that's where I'm up to with my fabric of the month so we've still got a couple of more months to go before she's up to date but we're getting it I never stress because they will get here um, I also had a jodery come in so this is the August limited edition this is a 28 count opal Brittany and it is called bridge troll not quite sure what we'll do with that one find something and of course I also had my monthly threads come in and I have just had another couple of charts come in which is the songbirds garden autumn dream love this I'm sure everybody's seen that and part six of Jack Frost's tree farm and I've also had my Cathedral Woods Goddess come in, my mirror. And I just got the embellishment pack with that one. So, yes, she's pretty. She'll be a start. What else? So that was haul. So, um, plans. So, plans are... What are the plans? Oops. Sorry, just had to run away for a second, but I'm back. Okay, so plans. Plans, of course, revolve around a Magical Stitches Daily 30 Stitchy Quest, and now Enchanted Stitches, and anything that I need to do for Semi Sane or uh, Ultimate Cross Stitch Group. So I will continue with my pumpkins for sale and that will be a finish, definitely a finish before the end of the month. I will be continuing with Miranda, she will be a finish before the end of the month. I will then move on to, do I want to drink my cold cup of tea? Hmm. Maybe not. I will then move on to Muriel, which is this one here. Now Muriel is... looking like that so I have quite a bit of work to do with her so Muriel I plan to use for a number of prompts being and get to my trusted little prompty book out so I can use her for what was I planning to use her for for the scarecrow week which finishes um, on Friday so I've got to get my backside into gear so I'm using her for prompt three which is a witch or feathers so she's a witch I have to do a new start to finish out the, that this week with the bonus, so I'll tell you that in a minute. I'm also planning to use, as I said, um, Eiffel Quaker for Cape May week, so I can use that for piece you named for yourself because it'll have my our initials on it. Oh, sorry, excuse me. It's a historical piece because it's around the Eiffel Tower date. I'm also probably going to use it. I've got the hiccups now. Use it for uh, the next prompt, which is m your choice, but you've got to talk about a migrating bird. And then I'm using castles in the air for the next two prompts of that for the butterfly and the spiral. And I've got to see if I can find a bonus one for that. I'm using... I'm using... Um, oh, magical stitches. So... A year a six, a week four, we're doing Quidditch tryouts. So that started on Monday. Uh, duh, today's Monday. Starts today. Goes through to the end of the week. And we have got to basically try out for a keeper, a seeker, 
a beater and a chaser. So for a keeper, do something with rings. A seeker, your most sought after chart. I, I don't know about that one, what I'm going to do for that one. I don't know what I'm doing for the, the rings one yet either. I have to think about that. The beater, I'm going to show you my new start because that you had to do something that's either a design or a designer starting with B. So I'll show you that one in a minute. And then the chaser, stitch on a female. So I'm using Muriel for that one. Then the bonus for this week is to find a teammate stitching either the same design, same designer or similar so like a project that's got cats or Christmas or something so you then do 200 stitches on that project and include the teammate and what they're working on and why 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 they're matching up but for this particular week you have to do a different number of stitches so your first choice one you do 500 second choice is 400 third and fourth choice are 200 stitches each on each project that you choose out of those two out of those four so I've now got to decide which is the one I want to spend the most time on so the 500 or the 400 stitches so yeah so that's going to be interesting and I haven't seen Stitchy Quest yet for this week's challenge I'll have to go back and have a look and see I'm also with Semi Sane Stitches we're doing Choose Our Whip or Choose My Whip uh, for this month so I started off with week one was forever and ever. Oh, you were here. Huh, that's what the noise was. It was Pussycat. Uh, week two was my Eiffel Quaker. Week three was pumpkins for sale. And it looks like week four will be Eiffel Quaker because I put that up with have ye any wool. Nobody picks have ye any wool. Every time I put it up, nobody likes it. But that's okay because Eiffel Quaker. I want to do some work on Eiffel Quaker, so that's all right. So that'll be in the plans. I've got to work out some more of my extra credits as well. Because I've only got three extra credits done. Four extra credits done so far. But that's all right. I've got till the end of October to do that. So that's cool. So. The new start that I'm going to have is this one. And I may very well have two new starts before I get back. But I'll talk about the second one in a minute. So this one is the bonus in the scarecrow week is to work on flip an egg is to work on um a scarecrow a project with a scarecrow so i thought about what have i got and i went through all my whips i haven't got anything with a scarecrow so i thought well I'll google and see what comes up you know i may be able to get a quick pdf download or something and of course this one comes up and i'm like i've got that uh, no, I haven't. Well, I'm sure I've got that. So I've got straight onto the cross stitch app. Just as well I've got that cross stitch app or the X stitch app. I've got it. And so I came up with Bent Creek's Little Scarecrow. Well, I have this. I bought this at the craft show just recently. And mine actually came as a little kit, which is it's just got Ada and DMC. So I can start this straight away. I haven't, but I can. So I'm going to be starting this. I'm using this for my scarecrow bonus and I'm using it for the magical stitches B because B bent creek. Two birds with one stone. So I, I don't know if I'll do it on the Ada or I'm gonna do it. But it's really funny because I was actually looking at it and um, thinking, I wonder who kitted it up because I don't know, think it comes as a kit to buy it but I could be wrong but then I noticed on the back there's a barcode and see that CDU that is Colours Down Under which was a Perth based um, shop she used to be at the Pioneer Village and I first went to her oh gosh at least 10 years ago must be must be at least 10 years ago when she was at the Pioneer Village. Then she stopped being at the Pioneer Village and just worked from home. So her name was Jo. And I I think previously, a couple of years ago, on one of my videos, I showed a whole bunch of haul that I bought when she was selling up. And I was getting Little House Needleworks and Country Cottage Needleworks charts for like $5 and $2 and Lizzie Kate charts. But she must have, I'm guessing, giving, looking at the barcode on this, is she kitted these up and had them in the shop and the lady I bought this from at the craft show this lady who runs stitch and stash she sells a whole lot of these things 
and I would say she bought up some of Joe's stock and is now offloading it elsewhere because Joe it must be at least two years since Joe offloaded all her stock because I, I got so much stuff and she was selling it for a couple of months and I got a whole bunch of charts I got some 28 count sorry 25 count um, a huge amount of 25 count fabric yeah because I was going to do Hade I haven't done it yet so I've got something like two and a half three meters of 25 count so I could do a Hade so I've got enough for that and so So, that's a new start. Um, so I've said I'm working on Muriel Eiffel Quaker. And next week I'm on holidays for a week. So we have a public holiday, a public holiday, a public holiday here on Monday for the Queen's birthday. It's also my sister's birthday on the Saturday. So, and then it's my birthday the following Saturday. So with my week off, I decided that I'm going to hopefully spend quite a lot of time doing some stitching next week, but maybe make a project bag. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I have a birthday start coming up and I'm doing this with a couple of friends. And if anyone wants to start a mirror, they're more than welcome to join. Oops, just chocolate. But this is my birthday start. I'm starting three for tea by Mirabilia or uh, Nora Corver. I have got on my DMC now and I have picked a fabric but I'm sort of thinking I might change my idea because this might be too blue. So this is called Ice Ice Baby. It is a 28 count. It will be a 28 count. I think it's 28 count. It must be 28 count. Yeah, 28 count Opal Lagana. So it is. it may be that it's a bit too blue. I'm not sure yet. I'll throw the floss on there on the weekend. But there's lots of white patches, which I actually thought was quite a a nice um, sort of look. But we'll see when I do my little flossy tossy. But it's really quite pretty. It's got some nice mottling. And I thought, you know, they're fairies essentially. So the blue would be quite nice for sky sort of look. But yes, so that will be my my new start on the 5th of October for my birthday. Oops, pull that out of the way. Do it that way. So yeah. Now if I don't use that one, I might use Gold Digger. But I'm sort of thinking, or even Old Map Style, which is the one I've just got. Because that's a softer, neutral. So we'll see. I'll just do the Floss Toss next week and see. But I have got all... All my DMCs, all ready to get carded up and do it pretty colours, pretty, pretty colours. So I did my, I've got to do some thread um, drops for that. I did a little bit of a thing the other day in PowerPoint and have got made up a, the, the size of the thread drop and put the picture on it and done the symbol and everything. So I laminated that at work today, you didn't hear that. So I laminated that and I'm going to cut them out over the weekend and just see if they work. If they don't work, then I go back to my old style of doing my handling my threads, which is just on a piece of cardboard, all handwritten. Uh, I think, I think that's it. Oh no, there's not. Okay. I have a little prezi I was going to show you. So I think I may have mentioned previously that my company has uh, projects or a, a um, some mines, a mine in Mongolia, which is a copper mine, and my boss goes over there quite regularly to visit. And you know, because we deal with like the admin girls, they're quite a lot for booking their travel and everything. You get quite friendly with the Mongolians. And Seggy sent a gift back for Deb and I the other day when the boys came back, which was really sweet. So we've got to go and do a gift for her before DJ goes back, but yeah. So anyway, so this was a little cup that she sent. So it's a cute little teacup. So I will be just leaving this in my craft room because I think it's so cute. But she also sent this. So this is a girt. Now, the, I don't know if anybody knows what a girt is, but a girt is a tent essentially. 
Now, if I think about it before I um, post my video, I'll just see if I can find some pictures of what they look like inside. They're awesome. So the guys, when they first went to site, were staying in Gers, and there's still some on site, but we've now built accommodation box and stuff. But they are absolutely awesome. So this is a Gers. But not only is it a Gers, it is chocolate. So they're Belgian, basically made in um, Mongolia, but with Belgian chocolate recipe. And if I can get this open easily. I have actually got some left because I've deliberately not eaten them. So inside the tin is like the inside of a girl. And I don't know if I can, I can't actually show. As a, around the inside is all painted as well. Just throw the tin away. So it's all painted so that it's sort of like the inside of a girl. It's so awesome. It's just so cute. But, so this is the chocolates. I, this is why I had to save one. Because the chocolate is shaped like a girl and even has a little top on top. So the haze, they're basically Belgian hazelnut chocolates, but they are so, so yummy. So we've been hiding them so that we don't eat them all. So it's still a few left. That was probably a big bang, sorry. I'll just put them in quietly. But yes, yeah, so this is really cute. And so once we finish them, look at the little doggy. They're so cute. So once we've finished eating the chocolates, this will be in the craft room as well. Don't know what I'll store in it, but I just thought it was so cute. Absolutely awesome. So it's very nice of Siggy to do that. So Deb and I have got to go shopping this week and this DJ's heading back next week over to Mongolia. So we'll give by an I don't know, an Aussie scarf for macadamia things or something and send them over to her to say thank you for that. And I think that's it. So this is probably going to be about an hour by the time I've put it all together. I think I've got, this is one's almost 15 minutes, I think the other two are about 20. I'll have to do some mismatching and working it out and probably clear stuff off my phone to save it and everything else. But pretty much that's it. So I will, oh, no, it's not because I did, I left my iPad here to remind me. So I'm, don't normally bother saying anything about new floss tubers that I've been watching because everybody watches floss tubers and I tend to watch the same as everybody else. But, and I think these people have well already been pushed around the uh, floss tube nation, but if you haven't watched Brenda and the Serial Starter, I found them the other day, awesome. I love those two ladies, they're fabulous and they just do the most amazing samplers. See, Chase, Chase. Tastes have changed because I'm, I look at all the sampler stuff now and think they're awesome. And the other one I found, now I've heard about this lady through Pam and Steph a number of times and I keep meaning to go and watch her floss tube and I finally managed to do it the other day. And her name is Ellen Reed and Ellen is um, plays in the group Crash Test Dummies. She is hilarious. So her channel is called Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. She is awesome, absolutely awesome. So I watched episode three first because it was in, came up in the um, For You sort of on the side. And I went, oh, I want to watch her. So I watched that. <laughs> I was sitting there at lunchtime watching it while I was stitching. And I seriously, I nearly peed my pants and spat my lunch everywhere because she was saying stuff and I'd be sitting there and I'd be trying to eat my lunch and just like, yeah. She is hilarious, absolutely hilarious. So I think everyone at work thought there was something wrong with me because I was sort of sitting there going, oh my God, and laughing and trying to be good and have lots of decorum and stuff. And yeah, she's cracking silly jokes. But no, she's awesome. So I've gone and watched number one now. I've just got to watch number two, but yeah. Awesome. Those two, two new channels, fantastic. If I do it right, I'll link them down the bottom for you. Um, other than that, that really is it. I will say goodbye now and hope that this video hasn't been too much of a mishmash of weird and wonderful stuff. 
So I've done everything I needed to talk to you about. I'm pretty sure I've done the haul, I've done my plans, and I've just chucked everything on the floor. Uh, yep, yeah, that's it. So that will be it for this particular update. So this update will hopefully be up tomorrow if I can get around to doing a quick edit on it tomorrow and put it all together. And I will probably see you again. I'd like to say I'll see you in two weeks, but it might be a bit longer. But if not, it'll be when it is. There's no rules. Certainly not in my world. Well, there is, but yeah. Anyway, I'll go now because I'll start to ramble so I will talk to you a bit later on and I hope you've enjoyed this video thank you for coming back and watching thank you for subscribing thank you for commenting and thank you for the likes and I hope I see you again soon take care see you later bye